Hey everybody, Greg here with Drifter Journey. Uh, we're here to do an oil change on a 2017 Ram Promaster 2500 gasoline version. Um, we're going to show you how we do it while we're on the road full time. Pretty much trying to be sneaky as we're doing it in parking lots. So, first step is find your oldest set of clothes. Because you're going to get a little dirty crawling around. Um, what you're going to need is a half inch wrench and a little shorty 15 16 for the oil filter um, then we have six quarts of full synthetic 5w20 for this vehicle a Mopar mo349 filter and the three dollar oil drain pan from Walmart. Uh, so all in, we were $41.77 for parts, full synthetic from a oil change place. Uh, I think is normally probably 80 to $100. I don't know, I haven't even checked. So this is how we save some money. And we're gonna show you how we do this. Uh, when we're doing a parking lot oil change, we try to keep it pretty nonchalant. So we have the hood still down. Uh, until we get the oil pouring, just then we can go with plausible deniability, saying we got a leak or something, make it happen. But uh, we're gonna run around and and put this in. You can keep it going. I'm gonna crawl under from the front. And... So we use our cardboard box because we don't want to get oil all over the ground this is the hardest part for us is getting that started try to be extra careful about lining this up nicely and this is a seven quart drain pan we have six quarts in there so it gets pretty full it's a little close. So I get it started. I got my rubber gloves on. And then pull out the drain plug. Now I gotta be careful because everything's hot right now. it started so then I try not to drop the bolt in put that off to the side and then we'll just let it drain for a bit waiting for it to drain we're gonna go ahead and pull out the oil filter so you want to release your hood latch which is inside the driver's side door here come around under the center there's a little latch to pull up lift that the support into place and then for the oil filter you're gonna need your little shorty wrench it's inside this housing down in here and first time I did this I was really bummed about this location because it's kind of small and tight in here but now that we've done it a few times I actually prefer this over old-school oil filters off the bottom so just get this loose. And then it actually comes out with the whole part here. And I'm gonna grab a paper towel real quick before I pull it out. Our goals when we're doing this in a parking lot is to make sure that we don't drip any oil anywhere. Uh, just out of respect for the location and it's better for the environment. So I pull that guy out and there's the oil filter and it just pops out of this housing. Put that aside. We we'll get rid of this. New filter comes with a new little O-ring gasket here which goes on the cap. This is one of the hardest parts so you got to get the old one off which 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to do by hand. I'm going to use a screwdriver real quick. A standard screwdriver here. Not worried about damaging the old one. So just peel that off. And then we're going to want to put a little bit of fresh oil on the new one. Just squeeze that and put a little dab on my finger. And get that seated up on here. It should just roll on pretty nicely. So make sure that's totally seated. And you put this in and then you should hear an audible little click when it's in and then it's snug. And we're just going to put this back down in where it came from. Start to tighten it by hand. And take one of these off because they're getting pretty oily. Snug it up. a little shorty so you don't want to over tighten everything make sure there's specific specs you can look them up if you need to uh, I just go snug plus a quarter and then once we're done we'll check everything to make sure there aren't any leaks I one quart back up to make sure we don't spill it we're gonna go back down under and see if we're done draining yet So it looks like we're pretty much there. I always give it a couple shakes just because it makes me feel good to get a little extra out. Uh, we try to park on a slight angle so that most all of the old oil can get out. Uh, we'll let it drip a little bit more here and then we'll put the cap back in. All right, so it's just to a drip now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this cap back on. Put the bolt in, make sure that you don't cross thread it so it should go in easily. I'm going to get that in just snug by hand and then I'm actually going to take off this greasy glove because my wrench is clean and then I'm going to wipe up around here real quick. I'm going to slowly move the oil out of the way, away from the spout. This is the most precarious part. We'll move that out of the way real quick. Just tighten this up. And you don't want to over tighten this one either. Should be good then we'll just go back up top and fill and then we'll start it and make sure we don't have any leaks so we have our funnel here uh, the engine oil fill is right here it says 5w20 right on there I'm gonna pop that open put our funnel in and then pour in six quarts of the new full synthetic uh, we're gonna actually not show this part because it's a two-person job and we don't want to spill Now that we got half of the jug going, it's a one-person job again. We just like to have two people when we start to make sure that we don't pour oil all over the place. So we added the full six quarts. I'm going to go ahead and put the cap back on here. And then I'm going to start the engine to let it cycle for a second and Jess is going to stay down below and scream if we have a leak 
which we shouldn't. So we're started. She's looking down below, nothing there. Checking over where the oil filter is. Looks clean there, we're good. Yep. All right, so we'll just let it run for a second here. And then I'm gonna let you know how to reset the computer. In order to reset the computer, take the key, put it in. You're gonna flip it to the notch right before starting the engine. You gotta hit the gas pedal to the floor three times. I think it's within five seconds, but just go one, two, three, and then start her up. So keys forward, one, two, three, started. And that should reset it. Thing we didn't mention would be to check your oil dipstick after we let it run for a few. So take it out once and wipe it off. But just to double check, make sure that everything looks good and we got it all in the right spot. And right on there, we are in the X's. So everything's great for that. All right, so I think we did a pretty good job. We didn't actually get any oil on the cardboard. Uh, and then yeah, we just wipe this out with a paper towel after we drain it all in back into the bin um, And then we're gonna see if we can try and give this to someone at the tire shop uh, So that we don't have to recycle it. Uh, it'd be nice to see it get reused That pretty much concludes our video of doing an oil change in a parking lot on a 2017 Ram ProMaster 2500 uh, guest version um, Hope you enjoyed watching if you have any questions, let us know. If you see that we did anything wrong, let us know. Um, we're just gonna clean everything up and then we can take the used oil to pretty much any uh, auto store and they usually accept it for free. I think it might change depending on state, but we've never had a problem yet. So we'll just clean that up nicely and take it in and drop it off. Um, did an oil change for just around $40 and we should be good for another 5,000 miles. Uh, the RAM is supposed to let you know when to do an oil change. It'll give you a warning and then uh, you have 500 miles to change it after that happens. Uh, but we just do it at every 5,000 mile interval just to feel good about it um, and make sure that we have fresh oil in there all the time. Like I said, if you have any questions, drop them below. Please subscribe. Uh, keep an eye out for our other videos about the ProMaster and our life on the road.